Hello, welcome back to Reads of an Apple. My name is Stacy, and I am here to start my week 38 vlog. It is currently nine o'clock on Sunday night, and I have some updates from this weekend, but welcome if you are new here, and welcome back if you are not. Um, Let's just get into it because I do have quite a bit to kind of chat about. First off, I did this weekend finish the sweater I started last week. So my first Christmas present is officially done. So this is the bell crop sweater. So then this is how the sleeves ended up. And this is in a girl's size eight. And then it's a boat neck. So here's so it's just the kind of supposed to just sit across, um, which you probably know that if you know what a boat neck is, but it turned out super cute. And then I was trying to finish this during the Bronco game earlier today. They did win, although it was a horrendous game, but at least they won. Um, but I finished this during the game, but what was... I kind of started stressing myself out because I was going to pick up another project to work on next and I use um, for all of my electronic craft patterns I use um, Mega the cloud service and I have all of my patterns stored and over organized and all that on there but I for some reason don't have most of my Christmas patterns uploaded into it yet so what I like to do is if they're available as a PDF, then I'll upload the PDF on there. If they're available for free on like a crochet bloggers website, what I'll do is use the um, easy printer or PDF printer or whatever it is to print a web page. but you can kind of just keep the pieces that you want. So I don't need the inspiration and all of that. I try to just keep the pattern and then I can upload that as well because sometimes patterns do come down or they end up going behind a paywall or something like that. So I try to, when I find a pattern I like, save it as a PDF. Um, but I was going through my list and the pat the colors that I chose for this were supposed to be for somebody else <laughs> who's an adult size sweater. <laughs> So I was kind of freaking out because I was like, oh no, oh no. So I'm going to have to redo my planning for a couple of things because I chose a different yarn for her because I only had two skeins and or two cakes for it in the mandala ombre and that was more like a pink teal rainbow kind of striping effect and this one was supposed to be for one of the adults <laughs> because I had five skeins of that but now I have to kind of switch how things are going um so I might have to change what yarn I end up using for it but that is okay I'm not going to <sighs> stress myself out too too much over it. I at least realized it right away and early enough that I have time to make adjustments how I want to and it's not like feeling rushed because Christmas is right around the corner but outside of that I officially have my first Christmas present done which is exciting. Now I just need to figure out what I need to work on next and I want to start one of the bigger projects, but I think I need to try to get the patterns up on Mega so that I can download them to my iPad and have them better formatted that way. So let's do the quest calendar first and then we'll chat about what I read this weekend. So I am doing the 2022 quest calendar. The theme is The Gates of Terralon. This is created by Sundial Games. This is a daily calendar where every day you play with your character, similar to tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, D20, that kind of a thing. So I have been playing this year as Savani Moon Chaser. She is a monk class and her race is feline. So she is a cat person. And she is awesome, and I've been having a lot of fun with her. 
so we are currently in so quick rundown of the gist in case this is my first video that you're watching at least for my weekly vlogs um in our world there are gates to other worlds and we were tasked by a world watcher when the gate to the demon world broke and pieces of the sh of shards of the gate went into each of the worlds so we were tasked to travel from world to world to, to collect these shards and then we can reassemble the gate to the demon world and basically stop the implosion of the universe. When we were in the shadow world, we came across some people trying to destroy the gate, um, the like portal gate that's hidden, and it led us to the like light based world and there we came across a king that is sending his guards and his soldiers out to destroy these gates for the betterment of the universe but what he doesn't realize is that it is from the way i'm taking it and the way i see it kind of playing out is that he's disrupting the balance and things will not be good if we start destroying some worlds or access to worlds and gates to worlds. So when we tried to convince him of this, he stole our World Watcher staff and all of the shards we had previous collected and, and put them in like a vault, which is was at the center of a labyrinth guarded by a minotaur. So we last week figured out the labyrinth and defeated the minotaur. So we are coming close to getting to the vault and being able to collect not only our shards that we had previously collected back, but we're pretty sure that the shard from this world is in this vault as well. So then we can move on to the next world. Um, so we'll do a quick rundown here since this is the beginning of the week. So this is last Friday is where we ended up. We went, we had to make it through some traps to enter the vault. Any of this script type font, this is like our story based of what's going on in the world. Anything in this like block style font in a box, this is the mechanics of how we're going to deal with whatever the story is throwing at us. And then one other point of um, not contention, but one other point is just so you are aware, Saturdays and Sundays are combined, but all of the information that we need to know is on the back of the previous day's page so we can avoid spoilers. So, okay. It looks like that those few traps were all we needed and we have come across the shards and the World Watcher staff in this vault. So let us see what it says. You thankfully found all of the gate shards and the World Watcher's staff within the vault of the labyrinth. You also find the shard that fell into this world. You are glad they were not destroyed. Now you can continue your mission. So reclaim the gate shards, roll a d20 plus wisdom, reminder danger sense. So this is just when we approach the stones. This is something that we've encountered with every single one. It's basically trying to not become cursed by being in contact with these stones. So like I said, it is a wisdom roll of which we have a plus three and we also do have the skill danger sense, which gives us another plus two. So a total of plus five to whatever we roll on our d20. So let us see. And that is a 10. So we are at 15. Okay. If the result is 13 or more, having dealt with these before, you are more able to deflect the negative magic that emanates from the shards and courses through the air. So we are not cursed. You use the magic within the World Watcher's staff to absorb the gate shards into the crystal on top. They can now be transported safely. And that is it for this weekend. So we will play throughout the week every day to see how the story advances. Hopefully we will be getting out of this world soon. But I can see there kind of being some issues based on just dealings that we've had in this world previously. All right. So that is it for that. So let's touch base on books I've read because I actually did read quite a bit this weekend. 
partly because um, my brother's girlfriend uh, had a dog surrendered to her at work. She's a vet tech at a local hospital here. And somebody had a three-year-old long-haired German Shepherd. And there's a long story basically behind it. Um, she was going to have to get rid of the dog anyway because she's going through a divorce. And he's also sick and so but they can't they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him and it was getting past her what she could afford to pay for to try to diagnose what was wrong with him and so her options were surrender the dog to somebody or euthanize him and Sarah the animal lover that she is uh, has brought him home to at least get him through the dose of meds he's on to see if we can kind of get him healthy and in a place where he can be safely taken in by somebody without it being like horrible vet bills right off the bat. So, um, I was up late because he was having separation anxiety from not being with Sarah on top of the fact just his first night in a new place and, you know, new situation. So he, um, is staying in the room across the hall from me and he was whining and pawing at the door and breaking my heart. But so he kept waking me up. So I not only started, but I finished in the arms of an Android by Tracy Lauren yesterday. I've read Tracy Lauren before. This has been, I've been wanting to read her sci-fi. I've read her fantasy romances and love them. Her Perished Wood series is amazing. Um, but this is the first book in her Android series. I really liked this. You could tell it was like an earlier book and that it wasn't just quite as tightly plotted or just tightly edited. I don't, I don't know, like, it just wasn't quite as tight story-wise as her fantasy books, although those are her newer series. And this, I feel like, came out in 2019, and it also leaned very heavily on some common sci-fi tropes, which is fine, but I feel like if you're really going to lean into those tropes and not do as much development then they, it needs to be done really well. But I give it four stars. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I'm definitely intrigued. I know she has a second book out in the series that's like Christmas based because it's like something about a blue android for Christmas. So I'll probably wait until like I get into my holiday mood reading and then maybe read it then. But this is available on KU. I need to be better about telling people this. And yeah, I liked it. Four stars. It was perfectly fine, perfectly good for a sci-fi. I don't think I've read an android. I've read like cyborgs and stuff like that, but that's cyborgs are a mix of human with mechanical parts and he is android. So he is full computer, fully synthesized. And there were some weird things that kind of went along with that, but I was there for the ride. So it was fun. Um, now I decided to pick this up and I have been wanting to pick this up almost all year because I needed one prompt left to finish the Heaving Bosoms 2022 Reading Embrace and that is Jimmy Simpson's Robot Adventure and so I knew I wanted to read like a cyborg or android sci-fi to fill that prompt <sighs> because give me a robot prompt and I would be like okay find me a book with a robot as a love interest. Um. So yeah, that has officially finished my Heaving Bosoms reading embrace, so I just gotta email that in as completed. Um, for Fall in Love, this also worked perfectly for... What did I use it for? Photo cover. Because the top part is a photo. <laughs> it's been manipulated, but it started out as a photo. It's not like illustrated, so... I mean, it has graphic stuff to it. I don't know. I'm counting it. I'm counting it. It's not fully illustrated. But yeah, so there is that. That also was one of my TBR prompt books. So that's pretty cool. Um, then I picked up Foreplay on Words.
And this is by, hold on one second. Okay, I had to grab my iPad, but it was on the other side of my bed somehow. So this is by E.L. Coslo, Coslo maybe. Um, this is the first book in a series by her that is not marked as a series on Goodreads, but it looks like it says the Dirty Words something. The Dirty Word series, maybe? But this is also on KU. I wanted to pick this up because I saw some really steamy fan art for this on Twitter. And then I read the premise and was intrigued. So in this, we have two writers. One is a erotic fiction and romance author. And she basically gets asked by her agent in her publishing company to work with um, a popular, I can't remember what they called them, masked author, mystery, thriller, I can't remember what the other two, but he does like mysteries and thrillers and things like that. And he is adding sex to one of his books for the first time that's not Fade to Black because his heroine in the book is a prostitute and he does not have to know how to write with emotions and how to, like his writing style is just very different. And so his agent talks to her agent and well we find out actually that his agent is like, I'm sending you like books of romance authors from our company read through these see who sounds like a good fit or is a right has a writing style that could help you and then we will have her come help you kind of work on this your sex scenes in your book so the premise was super fun super cute um and I was very very intrigued this is a heavy steam book heavy steam I mean it doesn't take very long for them to start getting it on and they get it on a lot in the book I enjoyed this I did not realize it was over 400 pages I did finish it today I started it last night and finished it today it was definitely and I'll touch base more on this in my wrap up, but just to give my quick thoughts, it definitely was too long. There were parts of this that kind of dragged and I found myself, you know, once I hit the 60% point, I was kind of skimming through the sex scenes because there were a lot of them. And what I also was not expecting that was not mentioned in the blurb and I don't know if this needs to be a trigger, maybe content warning, um, or maybe mentioned in the blurb, there is quite a bit of BDSM talk. Now, the character that they're writing, they end up writing a book together, and she's written a BDSM book before, and the writing works so good together and their chemistry that they decide to write a book together which is kind of a little bit of a spoiler but not really because it happens pretty quickly um that they want to move forward with this and they want the main heroine in their co-written book to be an old school dominatrix so she introduces him to the person that kind of helped her with her research when she wrote her bdsm book and so there's a good 40, maybe 35, 40% of this book that is dealing a lot with BDSM. It is not heavy BDSM. They do go to like a showcase, I think is what they called it, where they are marked as observers and it's basically like a BDSM mini convention. <laughs> I guess is what I would call it. So there are options to kind of see other people play or join in in scenes or different kind of things or potentially meet someone that you might be willing to enter in a relationship with or something. And they're there as observers. 
And I mean, they very much kept them like these are the rules even though you're only an observer these are your rules you have to follow your rules and and then they have a couple sessions so they can both kind of get into the head of this other character and not fully enact scenes but get the gist of some of the things that this woman might be doing between her and her sub and just so they can get the right experience to be able to get into the proper headspace to write for her. And then they get some gifts and they experiment with some beginner style stuff at home. And it's fine. I feel like it was well written. But I'm just not somebody who's into BDSM at all. I just don't enjoy it. It doesn't titillate me. I'm just not, it's not my thing. Maybe it'd be different because even the heroine talks about how when she was doing this previously, she understood like the rush of chemicals of your body from the different experiences and stuff, but she never really felt aroused by it. But now doing these mini lead up scenes with, um, Evan is his name. Her name is Chase. She feels the arousal now in these situations, but some of that stuff I'm not into. So, but anyway, I'm not yucking anybody's yum, but I was not expecting there to be that in this book and for it to be so much of the book. We went, I mean, we were with them during these things. And while they didn't participate in some of the more kinkier or <laughs> higher level BDSM activities, it does get slightly descriptive when they go to this showcase thing of what they are seeing being done. And the person who's like hosting the showcase is a Dom woman who's very much into like humiliation kink and pet play and that is way outside of my comfort zone and I just felt uncomfortable in a bad way reading those scenes but it it helped that especially Evan because he's like so vanilla coming into this that he he felt uncomfortable too so it helped that I like we were both like I was uncomfortable and we were reading in his POV at the time and he was super uncomfortable with it so it kind of helped me read through those parts but I haven't really seen anybody talk about that but I didn't really look at the reviews so that's why I wanted to really kind of touch base on that because if you are like me and you don't enjoy it or you at least know it's coming up so you can prepare yourself because I was not expecting it to go in that direction. So yeah, I am torn on how I want to rate this. Because it was like close to half the book, I just... I don't know. I'm really struggling on how to rate this because outside of that portion of the book, I was enjoying myself. I do feel like we should have faded to black <laughs> some of the sex scenes or some of their more like fun bantery conversations because we saw more of them joking around and just, I mean, their banter was great and they both have very dirty minds. So it was really cute to kind of see them go back and forth. But there were a couple of times where we, even later on in the book, where we kept getting that conversation, but then like the next morning, there's a mention of how they stayed up all night talking about anything and everything. And I was like, I want to see those deeper conversations on the page and not just the fun bantery stuff. Because it got to a point where I was just like, I need to see. I, I don't need you to tell me that they're developing this deeper connection that's based not just on their sexual relationship, but that there's something else there. And I was missing that a little bit. So I was like, okay, maybe a four star, but objectively I would probably give this like a 3.5 or a four star. 
but my enjoyment level for almost half this book was like a two star because I do not enjoy BDSM. Not that it was written bad, but I just, it's just not my thing. So my enjoyment level wasn't as high. So I don't know, maybe I'm going to do like three stars of enjoyment and four stars of objective and then meet in the middle at 3.5 but I'm not 100% sure yet so like I said I just finished it not too long ago and so I'm still kind of trying to process my feelings. I do know it at the very highest I will go is a four star because outside of the BDSM stuff I did still have some issues with it. And it was just so long. I mean it just I was like okay let's go let's go. There were some descriptive scenes of things that we could have more sped past. Like they go on a book tour and we get like drawn out scenes for all six stops on their book tour. And I would have much rather us kind of sped through their book tour a little bit and maybe just focused on Chicago because both of their families came to the Chicago book place, book tour. And when they got back home to their final one, which is when he does his big, that's kind of where they end the book. So you can probably guess what he plans, but I just like, we didn't need a scene of them in LA going to Disneyland. We didn't need a scene of them hanging out in downtown Denver. We didn't need a scene of them. I mean, I guess we got to see them have sex in all these different places across the country, but we didn't need to see them in Seattle hanging out. And then what I thought was going to be the third act conflict happened at like the 60-ish percent. And I was like, okay, I know that there's the first couple chapters of the next book at the end of this book. So I wasn't, but I wasn't sure where that would come into play percentage wise. Because I feel like Max Monroe books, they have a note that's like, this book ends at 90% <laughs> or something like that. They usually say. So I didn't know when we were coming to the end and I felt like things were wrapping up and then we were on every single stop of the book tour and I was like I just want to finish this book. So yeah my quick touch base on this book was not very quick but are we surprised? But yeah probably three void five stars but we will see when I film my wrap up and when I sit down to write my review how I feel then. I will be using this for Fall in Love for over 300 pages. Now, that is all that I have finished. Um, and this clip is super long, so I'm very sorry. But I am going to be starting the Rake Appreciation Society book tonight. And that is an Amanda Quick book. I want to say it's Surrender, but let me check my to-do list or my task list. Yes, so it is Surrender by Amanda Quick. This is the third or fourth. I've read three books or this is my third. I don't know. I've read a few Amanda Quicks before, so I'm super excited. I'm trying to go into this blind. She's definitely more like fantastical historical writer where you just kind of go along for the ride and expect crazy stuff to happen. So I'm definitely excited to pick this up and kind of see what ride she takes us on this time. Um, and tomorrow, so tomorrow is the 19th. I never changed my clock. I think tomorrow was September 19th. What is today? Yes, today's the 18th. So yeah, tomorrow, Monday is September 19th. And tomorrow starts the second round of Bang in the Night. This is a Halloween spooky season based bingo. I mean, I guess it's not technically a readathon. It's more like a reading challenge. But it starts this week. They usually, last year they started it on the first day of fall and it runs through Halloween. So they're starting it tomorrow because this coming week has the first day of fall. Um, if you have not seen it, here is the bingo board that they are doing. This is hosted by the But Does It Bang book club, which is Jackie and Beth. 
I think it's just those two now because I think Melissa isn't doing it this year, but she did it last year. Um, I have like a mini TBR idealist posted on my blog. So check my link tree for my blog list if you want more because it is a longer one. It's a month and a half basically. I'm not going to do a dedicated vlog for this just because it is going to be a lot of books and it is running for so long. But in case you hadn't seen it before, I wanted to at least show you so you can join in. Like I said, it goes through October 31st. They are doing giveaway prizes, but it, I think last year you were only able to enter if you're a part of their Discord group. So definitely reach out to either Jackie or Beth um, to join the Discord. They both have Instagrams, I know for sure. And I know they probably both have Twitters and other stuff, but let me... Just kind of touch base on what the prompts are, just in case you are having a hard time seeing them. So I'm just going to go row by row. I'm Horny, which is a main character with horns. Howlin' for You, which is shifter romance. Skull on the cover. Trick or Treat, which is characters in costume. Hashtag Bang in the Night, which is sex in a spooky location. And then row two, Into the Woods, which is takes place in the woods or forest. PSL, Pumpkin Spice Latte Vibes. A Deal with the Devil, which is either main characters make a deal or devil in the title. Published in October. And then A Dark and Stormy Night, which is dark in the title. Row three is This is Halloween, hashtag squad goals. And then there is a free space, so it is only 24 books. And then it's a sign, which is tarot or astrology related. And then there's the cat. Last year it was similar, but they were like bonus points if it's a black cat. But they took that part away this year. Row four is who you're going to call. Ghosts. And then a BIPOC romance. I put a spell on you. Something with magic. An orange cover. And then double, double toil and trouble, which is twins. And then the final one is hashtag read gay, do crimes, bite me, which is vampire romance, full moon on the cover or step back, beast mode, which is monster romance, and murder she wrote. And what is exciting is Surrender by Amanda Quick was published in October of like October 1st, like 1990 or something crazy like that. So it works perfectly for published in October. So I'm excited. That will be the first book I will be able to apply to that as well as my fall in love reading challenge. So I'm going to be doing double duty here, but that is fine. That is fun. But otherwise, I think that is all I have for you today. Hopefully my clips the rest of this week will be shorter, but we will see what happens. I know I like to ramble at you guys, but we had, we at least had a lot to touch base on. Um, like I said, definitely check out my link tree to links to my blog. I have, um, the hosts for being in the night link to that blog post. Um, what I'll probably do is put that in the link tree as a separate thing instead of just my blog, but we'll see if I remember to do that later. And then yeah, everybody else that I talk about, I try to link down below as well, but we will see what happens and I will see you all tomorrow. I hope you all have a good Monday. Happy Monday. I don't have too, too much to update for today. I did not start Surrender last night, but I plan on starting it tonight. Um, I just need to finish editing last week's vlog and get that ready to go up for Wednesday. And then... <laughs> <clears throat> that's pretty much it so that shouldn't take too too long and then I will pick up surrender and read that the rest of the night and hopefully I can kind of get halfway through but we will see um because rake appreciation society is on Wednesday but otherwise that's all I have so Let's just do the quest calendar. So a super quick update for today. So yesterday we did manage to get into the vault and collect all of the previous gate shard pieces as well as the one from this world. 
So I'm assuming we're going to be heading towards the gate in this world to move on. Yep, and we do have a map. So it looks like we're going to head to the Sun Temple. All right, it takes you a while to get out of the labyrinth, but you manage to do so and stay in one piece. It is time to leave this world to finish your mission and restore the demon gate. Apparently this is the last one, okay. So we can either travel the Northern route or travel the Southern route. Both are a D20 roll plus your wisdom. Reminder, survivalist skill, map and compass and mount. So, we can either go the northern route or take the southern route and kind of go along the coast. I almost feel like going along the coast would be a little bit better. Because then we can kind of stay close to a water source. So, I'm going to say let's take the southern route along the coast. So, that will be option B. Let's see if it has anything else. Travel the southern route. The coast of this world is beautiful and has spectacular views of the ocean. You spend longer on this voyage simply to take in the scenery and to have some time to take a break. Everyone deserves some rest and relaxation, especially the hero. Okay, so... Like I said, a wisdom roll, and my wisdom is a plus three. We do not have survivalists, but we do have a map and compass, which gives us an extra two. And then we also have a mount, which gives us an extra plus four. So grand total of plus nine to whatever we roll. All right. And that is a nine. So we are at 18. Okay, if the result is 11 or more, you relax and de-stress as you travel along the coast and enjoy the warmth and quiet peace. The sunsets are beautiful. The sunrises are invigorating. You do some fishing along the coast, but it is not enough to feed yourself for the entire journey. You need to consume two meal rations. If you do not have enough, reduce your health by one for each ration you do not have. I have, I think, four left. Yep, I have four left, so we will minus two, so we are down two, or maybe we're down to three. Did I use one? No, we're, we're, we're at four, so we have enough, no matter what, so I just have to check my notes in case I haven't updated it, so I have either, I have either four or three, but that is all we need, and that is all I have for you today, so very, very quick update, but... That's what happened when nothing really else happens in my life. But I will say, <laughs> I will say, I <laughs> am going to have to kind of sit down and go through the yarn that I pulled for projects because I think I mentioned yesterday. I kind of messed up on what yarn I was supposed to use for which projects. And I spent probably longer than I should have just looking at the yarn that was available when I went grocery shopping tonight and I went to Walmart. So I did not end up getting any yarn. Well, that's, that's a lie. I did get a, a skein of, feels like butter, which is a lion brand or feels like butter because it was on clearance and this is like a pretty light blue like a light teal color and it is like super soft I, I I'm a big fan of this yarn and this was in the clearance section and they only had one but at least it's a bonus bundle so you can make a decent amount with this it's got how much almost 600 yards in it but it's it's really pretty they had a pink color too but I'm not I don't have I usually make stuff for people and I don't have very many people that are big pink pink lovers so I didn't get those ones but I at least got this one because it was on clearance but I love the feels like butter yarn it is very soft and I don't know what I'm gonna make with this but I'm very very excited to have this in my stash. I only, I've, I've only used um, 
one project with the feels like butters before but I made I can't remember what I made like a tank top or a dress or something for somebody but anyway um yeah but yeah so I have to kind of figure things out and I'm probably going to have to end up buying some yarn because I don't want to use Super Saver for the sweaters, and I know that there is a way to soften up Super Saver, but some colors are are harder to soften in Super Saver. Like, I don't mind Super Saver for, like, scarves or hats or something, but just with a sweater, I feel like that's more on your skin, <sighs> but we'll see. I just want to try to find something a little bit nicer. I did find one that I thought was super pretty. It was a green ombre, but it was, I needed to get three skeins of it. They only had two and I asked the craft desk lady and she was like, nope, this is all we have. So I don't know, maybe I'll try to head to a Hobby Lobby or something sometime soon. Otherwise I might just keep an eye out for any sales from Mary Maxim or Hirschner's and then just order some yarn from them. I know Hirschner's at least has some of their own, their own branded yarn, which is nice. And they have some really cool cake and uh, colors. So maybe I'll look into that, but we'll see. I really wanted to not have to buy yarn, but because I screwed up, I'm gonna have to on one project I wasn't expecting to, but we'll see. Anyway. See, I managed to add another four minutes to this clip, but that is a little bit of an update from yesterday. I'm not as completely stressed about it, which is at least nice, but anyway, I'll stop rambling. I will see you all tomorrow. Hello, happy Tuesday. It is just about 8.30. And I was just gonna kind of get ready to lay down and read for a little bit. But then I was like, oh wait, I need to do my clip. So I actually have quite a little bit to do. So I don't know if I'm gonna try to shift some of it to tomorrow, but I'm not sure. But mm. tonight's tea, I went with the Twinnings. Uh, one of their holiday teas and this is the like pale yellow one that's peppermint cheer and it's peppermint and vanilla and then I added a touch of my vanilla bean sugar to it just for just that extra little hint of sweetness and it's so good it's so good and I've got my hello lovely mug which I use this mug all year round but because we're starting to get into spooky season it's even better Hmm. Yes, it was 90 degrees today, but I just, I just feel so much better when I have my nightly cup of tea. Um, so let's do, let's talk about surrender. I started surrender last night. I'm only like 15% in, so I did not get as far as I wanted to. So I need to bubble down. I did, um, look at the audiobook so if I have to I can pick up um, and finish reading it tomorrow during the day at work via audiobook but I'm hoping I can get through most of it tonight and then if I just have a tiny little bit left I can do that before the live show tomorrow. Um, but then otherwise I have mail today and I'm very excited about it. Um, so we will start with this. I have told you about this. This is from Megan Van Dyke, the author, and these are um, the little promotional goodies that I ordered for Second Star to the Left, as well as A Bargain with the Faking. So, I'm not sure how they're separated in here, so let me see. Okay, so here is the 
reimagined fairy tales book plate so this will go in second star to the left and then here is the bookmark it's got mostly just the cover on it and then there's a simplified blurb with the QR code and all that good stuff but so fun bookmark if you have not read second star to the left read second star to the left especially if you like fairy tale reimaginings it's a fantasy romance retelling of peter pan or peter of peter pan but um we don't really see peter pan the focus is on tinkerbell tink and captain hook it was so good so good i cannot wait to pick up the second book which is out um but <laughs> I talk about Megan Van Dyke a lot lately since I've read that, but I let me move on. So, and then next, so here is another book plate. So this is the book plate that goes for A Bargain with a Fae. I knew that they were different and she has different like designs depending on the series. So I'll have to stick this one in here. And then the bookmarks, so the same thing. It's pretty much just... Uh, isn't it just gorgeous? This is perfect for this time of year too with the like orange and yellow leaves and I mean there's green leaves down here but I just it's just so pretty. And then this says what would you give to save someone you love? And then the QR code super fun. <laughs> and then the last thing is the art print of Tink and Captain Hook. Look at this. It's so gorgeous with the sunset and her wings. Oh my gosh. I love that they're like mostly, you can mostly see through them, but not 100%. And the puffy shirts, I love, I love puffy shirts oh my gosh oh that is so gorgeous gorgeous this makes me even more excited to see what art print will come with the ugly stepsister I cannot wait oh my gosh so gorgeous I will link Megan's Etsy shop down below. This is where I got this. You can get um, the promotion packs for both of these plus signed uh, paper book paperback books. She might even have some hardback books, but I'm not 100%. So I'm going to put the art print and the signed book plate for the other one back in here. And then I'll stick the bookmark in my bookmarks little bag. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. I love it. Okay. All right. Make sure we don't miss anything. That's a bookmark. That's a bookmark. Which I'm just going to put in here because I want to try to read A Bargain with the Faking sometime soon. Hi. Okay, so moving on, we will do my fortune cookie soapbox of the month. If I remember correctly, I think it's somewhat kind of spooky. It is. So the theme is the friendliest ghost. And the extended collection launches September 30th at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. They are based out of Oklahoma. If you have not seen me unbox this before, this is uh, Fortune Cookie Soap is a like bath and beauty product company. Everything's like handmade, mini, mini small batches, however you want to say it. They're based out of Oklahoma. I love them. This is their monthly box. So you get four, usually it's four of the, the four cents that they usually have for the collection and then in four random types of products. So it's a good way to test out what, like if you like a scent or not and try some of their products. Usually one, at least one of them is full sized. Every three months they do have a bigger box that usually has five or six uh, scents in it and then usually there's more than one full size in that one but I love them the box is 16.95 dollars 
with shipping and then they also send a code once your box ships that's ten dollars off a 25 dollar purchase so basically that just covers shipping unless you spend 75 dollars because then you get free shipping anyway but every month has a theme i love them they're pretty much the only lotion shampoo anything bath body they're pretty much all that i use anymore so it looks like there are four cents in here, but I'm going to wait to read them till we can kind of look at uh, stuff that's going on. Okay. And then usually for each collection, they also have four random stickers that they create. You Once the collection goes live, you can buy a, like the four pack of stickers for like $3.99 or something like that. But you also, every order comes with one random sticker. So ours is You're My Boo with this cute little ghost. That's super cute. Okay, so let's play. This month is, it looks black, but it's like a really pretty dark blue. Usually the tissue paper is like on theme as well. Which is just, it's the little details, right? Okay, so... All right, first off, we've got this really pretty, oh, this is a solid sugar scrub, but this is my favorite color, this really pretty gray. It's called Scream or Sugar. So a solid sugar scrub. Okay, after washing, step out of the stream of water and lightly rub bar all over. Follow up with your hands to massage and exfoliate your skin. Rinse off the remaining sugar and lightly towel dry. Interesting. Your skin will feel like velvet. No need to add any additional moisturizer. Interesting. It's a bar. Okay, let's smell it. That's the important part. How does it smell? Oh my gosh. Yes, please. Oh, I had to take it out of the package because look how gorgeous it is. Oh, there's definitely like cinnamon, like spooky time spices in this. Pumpkin spices. Cinnamon, maybe some like clove or allspice or something. Oh my god, this is amazing. I got some vanilla on this side. Okay, I love that. I love that. You know what? And just holding it that little bit, I don't know if you can tell my finger's slightly glossy, so it did melt fairly easily just in my skin. So that's not bad. My fingers smell good now. Okay, so let's, let's see what this says. Screamer Sugar. I love the smell of fleshies in the morning. An eerie blend of fresh vanilla cream, hauntingly delicious marshmallows, and unearthly pop pumpkin topped with cinnamon and clove. I feel like I got that pretty dang spot on. That's always exciting. Okay, moving on. All right, so this is Unfinished Business Pillow Spray. I am obsessed with their pillow and linen sprays. Every single night before bed, I spray my pillows, and sometimes I even spray in between my sheets. It's just so, ugh. The aromatherapy is so nice. Ugh. I love, love their pillow sprays. Okay, so this one you can't really tell. It's just a nice dark blue bottle. So I'm going to shake so everything gets... Unfinished business. I haven't seen Casper in a long time. Ooh, this has a totally different vibe. It's got something not super minty, maybe like a eucalyptus or something more herby. But I like that. I like that a lot. I think that would be really nice. Like it's really concentrated. I feel like that'd be really pretty spread out. Okay, wander the halls of Whipstaff Manor to look for the mysterious buried treasure. Warm notes of fresh cracked almonds surrounded by cozy cashmere and sweet vanilla. This soothing scent will make you feel like you are in heaven. I didn't get any of those scents, but 
I also smelled it like super con concentrated. Something smelled kind of like earthy and herby to me. So I'm guessing maybe that was a mix of the almonds and the cashmere. I didn't really get the vanilla scent coming through at all. Okay, so next is Get a Grave. And this is hand and body lotion. I'm guessing, I can't tell. I guess this isn't see-through, but hand. I usually don't use their thinner lotions just because I prefer the thicker creams. But let us see. Come on, pop. Thank you. Ooh. Whoa, that had some florals to it for sure. I've smelled this before. It's not necessarily a scent that I really enjoy. It definitely has some floral in it. Get a grave. Okay, now that it's rubbed in, it's definitely settled down. I think maybe because it was that first, like, punch. Okay, it is it is kind of dissipated a little bit. There is something slightly sugary that's coming through now, too. But those florals is what stands out. So. Okay. So, too late, bone bag. A drop dead ghoulish fragrance with notes of fresh bergamot and orange peel, sliced apple, ground pepper, and light jasmine intertwine with warm patchouli, sweet musk, and as exotic woody notes that will make you feel spiteful, spitefully spooky. Um, yeah, no, it's that jasmine and that musk is what I'm smelling. And that's pretty much it. So, I wish you could get more. I'm guessing that the orange peel or the apple was that slight hint of sugar I was getting, but this is not a scent I enjoy. Like, as far as jasmine scents go, it's definitely not overpowered jasmine-wise, but the jasmine with the musk, I'm not a fan of that mix. And since that's all I can smell in it, not a favorite. Okay, so then the final one came in a protected little thingy here. Argan Hair Perfume. I've gotten Argan Hair Oil from them before. I don't really use it too, too often, though, because I have a very oil, naturally oily complexion, so my hair gets oily really quickly, but although I know... I know, like, with my face, I'm oily because I'm dry, because I'm not, like, moisturized enough. And so, instead of going dry, my body overproduces oil. So, I wonder if it's the same with my scalp and my hair. I haven't really looked into the like, face-to-hair correlation. I probably should do that. But, I wonder if argan hair oil would actually help instead of hinder. Because that's mainly why I haven't really used it. But anyway, this is Can I Keep You Argan Hair Perfume. Best used on wet hair. Adds fragrance and luster to freshly washed hair. Protects when used before heat tools and adds extra shine. Well, I don't really you blow dry or curl my hair or anything like that. But it, it'd be interesting to try next time I take a shower to try adding this just to see how it goes. And once again, we have this beautiful blue packaging. I should have waited to put the lotion on because now my hands are all slimy. But let us smell. Can I keep you? It's exciting. I don't think I've had a perfume for my hair before. Ooh. Ooh. I just saliva it a little bit. This is definitely like fruity and right up my alley. So definitely this is yes. Oh my gosh. Um... Alright, I told you I was a good dancer. 
This scent will make you feel like you are floating on air. Subtle notes of sweet pear, tart fruit, and musky fig dance around crisp ozone, driftwood, and salty ocean air. Who else's first crush was Devin Sawa as Casper? Not mine, but <laughs> that is okay. So that is it. Um, definitely... This hair perfume is a 5 out of 5 for me if I were to rate these. Um, the Solid Sugar Scrub Scream or Sugar, I'm also going to give a 5 out of 5. The Pillow Spray, I'm going to give 4 out of 5, but that might change once I actually can like get it on my pillows and get it dispersed a little bit. And then this, I'm giving a 1 out of 5. Even though this is a better of a jasmine scent, I don't like the mix of the jasmine and musk. So I will be not, I, I will be not, I will not be getting this scent in another product. But otherwise, that's, you know, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good box. Three out of four scents are a go for me. I feel like usually there's at least one scent that I really enjoy that I look forward to getting products from but I'll link their website down below and you can check them out if you are interested in any of these scents okay so I have one more box to open now I have in the past showed you guys that I recently came across um, a bookish content site, well, more like fandom content site, called Enchanted Fandoms. I will link them down below. When I uh, got some stuff from them before, I'm pretty sure I showed my unboxing of it, but I got some mugs, and I got a Manon and a Braxos mug, and then they had their, they have what I will be opening as their drinking vessel of the month, and... It's $15 a month plus shipping. So for me, it's usually in the like $20, $25 range. Um, but they had, when I signed up, so I got the Manon and Abraxas mug because that was a previous one or that was old stock. But the one, but the themed mug when I got it, in case you did not see it, was Manon and Dorian. So it was a couple mug. And they are do in the middle of a series. They are almost done with this series of couple mugs for Sarah J. Moss characters. And when I made this purchase, they had some Nessian mugs available as well. So I got that. And then they were sold out of the Rowaylin and the Fae Sand. So Feyre and Rysand and Aelin and Rowan mugs. But... Last week they came back. I posted posted it on my Instagram. I shared it in my stories and everything because a lot of new people had found her shop recently and were asking if those two specific mugs were going to come back in stock. She decided to even though this was never the plan, everything's always limited run. She did do a small restock of just those two mugs that she was out of stock for. So I got them. And then she also had the Vamren mug, couple mug, still in stock. And I wasn't going to get it. But then I was like, why wouldn't I not get it? I love them. And I don't want to have all of the mugs except for that one. So because it was still in stock, she did not restock it. She had old stock still left available. So I got those three mugs. And then um, the September one is I can't remember who the S September one is but it's another Sarah J Moss couple so after that is one more but this is last month so or no current month I don't know this is either August I think this is August um and it's not a Sarah J Moss mug I remember the theme was Star Wars Rebels, and then she usually has a drink card that comes in as well. So let's do, so like I said, this is Enchanted Fiendom. So we have the Force Awakens drink, which is bio rum, coconut milk, pineapple juice, and orange juice. So 
So Force Awakens drink. And then the other side is the Rebels drink. So it's a cup of orange sherbet, orange juice, and maraschino cherries. Interesting. It's supposed to look like a sunset. So if you're interested, there you are. There's the Rebels drink. All right. I really don't like that lotion, guys. <laughs> so I'm excited. I tried to avoid spoilers. Um, I do know the Sarah J. Moss ones because she sent pictures of the artwork. I've seen the artwork everywhere. But all I really saw for this one was that the theme was Rebels from Star Wars. Um, it feels like a uh, like wine mug. So it is. It's one of her glitter wine mugs. Of which I have seen on her Etsy. She has one that's like a dark black and silver glitter that says High Lady of the Night Court or something like that. But this, oh my gosh. So it is the Rebel logo and this really pretty red glitter. Gorgeous. I don't know how she did that. That's cool. All right. So this is <laughs> hand wash only. Do not use in the microwave or dishwasher. Even if I have wine mugs or wine glasses that are dishwasher safe, I always just hand wash them anyway because I don't want things to get broken and they're usually oddly shaped. I don't know how she got the glitter on here like this. That is crazy. But fun. I have a fun little wine mug. I don't drink wine too, too often, but when I do drink, I usually do drink wine. So that's exciting. And then there is a code on this little guy on the other side. So that'll be perfect to use because I will mention this because this will probably be out around the time. Um, I don't know timing wise, but I saw on their Instagram earlier today that starting the 23rd through I think the 29th, they're going to be having an anniversary sale. So definitely check out Enchanted Fandoms if you enjoy stuff. They have some Lord of the Rings stuff. They have a book and fandom box that usually has a book in it from what I can tell and a lot of mishmash of items in fandoms. So it's definitely something I'm interested in, but because I'm also very particular about the fandoms and the boxes I get, like this, I am a mug drink obsessed person. So this one, knowing I'm always getting a drinking vessel, as she called it, Alexa Dismiss, this is easier for me. Plus she is at least giving out enough warning that if I want to pause or skip a month that's doable but I am a Star Wars fan so I am okay with that and this is absolutely gorgeous so I definitely will want to look into getting another one of her glitter mugs that's on her Etsy shop and then getting one of me one of maybe the Sarah J Moss ones but we'll see I'm obsessed now but that is it for packages so I will stop rambling at you we will toss this in there. Oh, really? Oh, like that. So let us do the quest calendar real quick. All right. So yesterday we uh, traveled to the Sun Temple and I decided to take the Southern route, which apparently was gorgeous. So let's see what today brings. Okay, so it looks like we did reach the temple. Super pretty. Okay. A majestic temple stands before you covered in large glowing crystals. Stone, sta stone statues guard a long walkway extending to the entrance. The lights flicker in response to your presence. The statues turn to gaze upon you in judgment. Light from the crystals begins to grow hotter. So cr number one is cross the walkway. Number two is gain access to the temple. And so let's see what we're going to have to do. All right. So 
Number one is cross the walkway. The glowing crystals light as you walk under them. They are judging the virtue of your past deeds. Our virtue is 10. If your virtue is zero or more, you pass through unharmed. So just like entering the castle. So number two, gained access to the temple. The entrance is magically sealed. There is an inscription above the door. Perhaps if you can decipher it, the magic seal will allow you to pass. There may be other ways in as well. Okay, um, so A is 2A is pick the lock, a dexterity roll. 2B is climb up to an open window, which is a strength roll. Uh, 2C is dispel the magic, which is a wisdom roll. 2D is bash the doors in, which is just damage. And then 2E is solve the inscription. So this is what the inscription is. And that looks like Morse code to me, of which I do not know off the top of my head. Um... I have, I could figure it out, but that would take a longer time than I want to spend doing this right now, but I know that I could solve it. So I'm just going to, if you would like to try to solve it yourself, pause, pause the video and I will give you the answer in a moment. Okay. So if you solve the Morse code on your own, the thing says the purity of light shall prevail. So hopefully you got it right if you are playing along and you tried to solve the puzzle yourself. But I am just going to... Alright, I'm going to try climbing to an open window first. So that is a strength roll reminder athlete. So our strength is a plus three. We do have athlete and we also get a bonus of athlete from our follower. So that is a total of a plus two both times for the skill and our strength is a total of plus seven to what we roll on our d20. My goodness, you make some funny sounds over there. All right, so that is a 15. So we are at 22. If the result is 17 or more, you are able to climb up to an open window and get inside. So we are officially inside the temple. Now, barring any other issues that may or may not arise, <laughs> we should just have to deal with getting to where the portal is, um, potentially dealing with whatever guardian is dealing or is guarding the portal here although with the king he might have destroyed the guardian here already and then going through the portal but we will see what happens tomorrow hopefully it won't be too bad so i'm gonna stop talking at you this was a super long update but we had lots to talk chat about once again and I will see you all. Oh, I should mention, in case you were wondering, these are my Tolkien earrings. I was looking for like a gold or a brown based earring today. And I saw these and I was like, I'm feeling Tolkien. Because I've been feeling Tolkien for like the past like couple weeks. But in case you were wondering, these are my Tolkien earrings. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Jesus saying hi in the background. Um, but I just wanted to say hello. It is actually Thursday. So I did not do an update yesterday. But it's just after 9 o'clock um, Thursday evening. And I have some things to update you on. So, But hopefully this won't be too, too long. Um, so I made notes of what I need to talk about in my planner. And then I have notes to go over what we are going to talk about. Um, so, first off, I will talk about what I have read since we last chatted. Um, Wednesday night, I was going to read Surrender. 
and I read about one chapter of Surrender and wasn't feeling it and decided to kind of go to bed and did not end up being able to fall asleep. So then I just decided to pick up something else and for some reason um, I did not pick back up Surrender and I ended up choosing to read Flirty Wolf. Um, this is by, I wrote it down in this book here, so I know, 80 Award, I'm guessing is how you say it. And this is a short story I got from her newsletter. And this is a part of her, um, a series, but I did not write the series name down because why would I think ahead like that? Um, so while I pull it up, I don't know what number it is. I couldn't figure out where in the series it sits. I have not read the other books in the series, so maybe I could figure it out if I knew couples and where it was placed. But so I read, I started and finished that Wednesday night and I'm going to give this three stars. I, I guess 80 award mainly writes curvy romances and this was a Valentine's ish day novella. It was set during Valentine's day and the theme of it was, um, there is a town where it is a lot of wolf shifters and from what I could kind of understand from characters who were alluded to is that either a wolf pack moved to town and kind of took over or there was a wolf pack already in town and this new one came together and now they're like meeting with each other but no matter what it is the it was a bachelor auction set at the local strip club and it is all of the packs enforcers are the bachelors up for bidding and then the money is going to be donated to the local library so it's like from afar it's hitting like a bunch of like ooh faded mates and ooh i like bachelor auctions those can be fun and ooh there somebody's going to be bookish cuz we're dealing with libraries and the heroine is a librarian and faded mates and shifters and from the outside it sounds really good um I just feel like there was too much tried to be packed into this tiny little novella it is less than a hundred pages I had to manually count them <laughs> and I just I know it just didn't quite hit me right I felt like the heroine is very curvy and she was very down on herself and she's talking about how she's not going to create a resolution of dieting or losing weight but more feeling more comfortable and accepting her body and who she is more which i love but it was just so down and she was constantly being like, oh, they wouldn't go for someone like me. They wouldn't go for someone like me. Oh, look at all these boys hitting on all these curvy women. I guess they're men, but I can't believe that men would like a curvy person. But then even though she herself was curvy and she saw these enforcers hitting on other curvy women in this at this before the auction started, and then she was just so, even though she saw it, she was still kind of like, well, not me. Even though she's having this like revelation of these men hitting on and seeming to like curvy women. So it was just kind of a, I don't know. Um, the series is called Alpha Wolves Want Curves. So this is a short story set in this. And then it got kind of weird because everybody thought that she knew that they were shifters because her boss at the library and good friend is mated to a shifter. And from what I could tell, it sounds like she was turned into a shifter, but I'm not 100% sure because I didn't, haven't read their book um, if she started out human or if she was already a shifter. 
but she assumed that because a heroine, and I'm totally spacing their names, she shows up to a mating ceremony in the past, so they assume she knows about wolves, but how that, it's like a huge party and they're all mating and it's basically a wedding ceremony like she's not gonna know like maybe these people are just weird and they call it mating ceremonies instead of wedding ceremony like people if they don't know that paranormal things exist that's not their mind will jump to the wrong conclusions so then she's like wait what and then he shifts for her in the middle of the freaking strip joint and and then she like kind of freaks out and runs to the bathroom and then she's in there eating donuts and there's some weird like I'm gonna go for the donut with the cream in it the long john because that's what I really want but I always tell myself I don't deserve the good things and I go for the cheap simple glazed cake donut it was just too much and I wasn't a big fan of the writing style, but mostly because the heroine, I just was so just like, she was so back and forth. And for a quick insta-love novella with those kind of tropes, I need it to be more like, I'm picking this up. Everybody's going to be on board. Faded mates, insta-love. We know it's going to be quick. Like, let's just get on board. We don't need to introduce all these different things. Like, I feel like it would have been more interesting to have it be she's not sure. And she had the crush on the guy because he's a bartender at, like, the PAX bar or something. And I'm going way too much into this book because I try to save my talks about books for my wrap-up. But I was kind of disappointed <laughs> that I picked up that instead of Surrender. But it's fine. I gave it three stars. I am slightly interested to see what she would do with a full-length novel and the time to really sit and work through all these issues that she was creating for her character. I don't know if I'd pick up those. She also has some dragon books, I think. So, I don't know. We'll see. She's not at the top of my list, but I like trying a new author. Um, But I was able to use this for... Fall in Love. Uh, what did I put this in for? New to you author. And then this is officially my first book for Banging in the Night or Bang in the Night. And I'm going to just use this for Shifter Romance. Um, I might have mentioned this before, but last year for when I posted, they usually, the girls, when they make the templates, usually have a theme song area. And last year for Bang in the Night, I did all Taylor Swift songs and I did not repeat any songs. And I was trying to decide who I wanted to do this year because even though Taylor Swift has her new album coming out, I wanted to try to do somebody else I really liked. And Maddie and Tay have their new like mini album that drops tomorrow on Friday. And Kelsey Ballerini has her new album that drops tomorrow. So I thought, ooh, I could do one of those two because those are two of my favorite like female country artists and groups right now. But then I decided to go with a classic. And one of my favorite singers of all time is Frank Sinatra. Now he has, as you all probably know, a massive massive library and discography what do you want to call it um so I decided to limit it to the special collection albums that started coming out in 2020 that were digital only um at least they were originally digital only I don't know if they're available other ways now but they are called the reprise rarities and there are five volumes some of these songs I had never heard before and I knew Frank Sinatra music in 2020 and 2021. I was so excited. Uh, I think the first and the third volumes are my favorite, but I haven't listened to the fifth volume enough to really say that it's not a favorite. So I definitely need to listen to the fifth volume more and really kind of settle in more with the songs. I just have been leaning towards podcasts more than music a lot lately. But anyway, those are what I'm choosing these songs from or for. And so I'm going to stick to those five 
albums. But there are a couple different versions of the same song, so I don't know if I'm going to allow duplicates because like some of them's like the him and a piano recording and one of them's like the full big band recording. So I don't know. I might slightly cheat a little bit, but technically they're two separate tracks on these albums, but I don't know. We'll see. I haven't fully decided yet. And if there comes a point where nothing else is fitting the book I want, then maybe I'll do it at that point. So for Flirty Wolf, and I'll go ahead and link it up above if you want to check out this song, I decided to do Everybody Ought to Be in Love because like I said, it's a bachelor auction and the plan is to pair all of the enforcers who are unmated with a mate. So they're trying to get everybody to be paired up. And that is Bing in the Night. Now, I did yesterday... <sighs> Never mind. I did not read that Wednesday. I read that Tuesday. I read that Tuesday. Um, so then Wednesday morning, I needed to finish Surrender because last night was the Rake Appreciation Society book club. So I had only, I was only at like, I was less than 20% in. So I pulled, so I got the, I pulled back up the audiobook on my phone and listened to most of that during the day at work. And then by the time I was done at like five at work, I was at like 86%. So then when I got home, I finished the book in ebook because I knew I could get through it a little bit quicker because for some reason, when my app wasn't letting me go more than one time speed. And I usually listen to like 1.3, 1.25 faster, but it's fine. I still finished it. I gave it four stars. I very much enjoyed this. The hero, Lucas, the Earl, I really loved him. And I thought this was so much fun. I did get really frustrated with Vicky, the hero heroine at points. And it has the trope where he needs a heiress, heiress, but he's not really saying he needs an heiress. And she is an heiress and she's tired of like fortune hunters trying to woo her. And so she doesn't want to get married. And she was too staunch in her stuff. And sometimes she was very stupid and sometimes she made very horrible decisions. And after it all kind of comes out, after they get married, she is like hating him and so angry at him because they were caught in a compromising position. So they got married to save face and she was so angry with him because that's when she learned he needed an heiress because his estate is penniless practically. And when she, they arrive at the country seat, she, she starts to comprehend why he needs the money. He needs to redo the crops at the estate and that will then spend money in town and the local village and help all of the tenants and just like help the local economy of his estate. And so she's like grasp, she's starting to grasp and she says this in her head that she is understanding the magnitude of what it means to marry for money. It's not just he wants more money to go spend money and do stuff. He needs the money to help his title and what assets the title has left thrive and survive as well as all of the people that are directly affected by it. But then she, so she's realizing this and she's just like, okay, I understand. I get it. But I don't think I care. And so she just chooses to still be angry and not really let that understanding affect her decisions. And almost, I don't know. I didn't really, I, I had issues with her. But four stars, I enjoyed it. Like I've mentioned before, with Amanda Quick, you just kind of go, gotta go into it expecting like slightly bonkers things and just have a fun time. And she's very vibey and... I think her books are just so much fun and you can't go into it thinking I'm gonna like, like you can, but if you get too critiquey, I feel like with Amanda Quick's, especially these styles of her historical romances, it kind of loses the funness that they're supposed to be. Like they're just supposed to be silly and fun and slightly bonkers and 
I don't know, but maybe that's just my take. Um, okay, so for Fall in yeah, Love, I used that for green on the cover. And then for Bang in the Night, I used this for published in October of 1990. And for my Frank Sinatra song for this, I chose In the Blue of the Evening because they like to go on a lot of little midnight adventures and trysts, and I thought that was perfect. And oh, this was a Frank Sinatra song I had not heard before. Once again, it's linked up there. And I love the song. This is one of my favorites of his newer songs. It's so good. So good. I love it. Um... Okay, so just a quick other reading update. I do plan tonight on picking up Gold Rush by Jenny Bunting. This is the second book in her Finch family. This is available on KU, and this was one of my TBR books for Continue uh, series. And I'm very excited to read this one. I do vaguely remember, it's been a couple months since I read the first book, but I know, I, if I remember correctly, the heroine in this, I think she is an author, but she is divorced or getting a divorce. And it is because she is choosing to be childless. And she was married and her husband was always okay with that. And in the first book, um, she is friends with the heroine in the first book. She talks about how her husband has since changed his mind. And he was kind of expecting her as they're getting older to change her mind as well. And so she was just like, no, I do not want children. That's not going to change. So for both of us to be happy, we're going to have to get a divorce. So this is a child list by choice, which I have not read very many of, so I'm excited. And I think, um, from what I vaguely remember from the author's note in the end of the last book, or from what I heard when this book came out, I believe Jenny Bunting herself is also childless by choice. So I feel like this is going to be well done and a heavy hitter. So that's what I will be picking up tonight. Hi, you're messing with my piles. <laughs> okay. Um, so then what I was working on last night after Rake Appreciation Society is I um, totally missed that the new quarterly challenge for the Romance Readers Reading Challenges group on Goodreads um, started on September 15th. I did last quarter, they did Harry Styles songs. But the quarter before that, they did Taylor Swift songs, which I participated in. I did not do the Harry Styles one. Um, so this theme is for, I'll link the reading group down below. Oh my gosh, you're knocking over my stuff. Please stop. <laughs> I can't be. Why? It runs from September 15th through December 14th, so three months, and it's Color Me Romantic, or Color Me Romance, or something like that. I had to put my book down because somebody was messing with things. Don't go back over there. You're messing up my pile. Yes, Color Me Romantic. So it is 30 prompts. Um, if you want to participate, the minimum is level one, which is just read five books. And for most of the colors, there are 30 colors um, with prompts. And it's for most of them, it's like the color blue and, the, and then it's blue on the cover or another option to fulfill that prompt. Um, they also have a bonus option, which is... A color that you like in the title, the series name, or the author's name. So me, technically, my favorite is color is gray, but they said color you like, not your favorite color, because that'd be a little harder, I think, to find and come across. Okay. So because it started on September 15th, I went through the books that I have read and I um, figured out what I have read since that date and gave assigned them prompts. So we are going to just go through those real quick and I'm going to tell you which prompt I used them for. So for 
Empire of Storms. This worked perfectly for the gray prompt, which is gray on the cover or an older character, of which this works for both because Rowan is centuries, thousands of years old. Um, and then for In the Arms of an Android, I use this to cover silver, which is, and then I chose that for silver on the cover, but also a story with travel because they are traveling in space. Um, for foreplay on words, I use this for the prompts for Violet, which one of them was new to you author. And then for Flirty Wolf, I use this for Lavender, of which one of the prompts was Insta Love. And then for Surrender, I chose for Blue, which is a character that deals with a physical issue, was the one that I chose, because the hero in it has a, a war wound on his leg, and so he suffers with a pretty bad limp. So he can't, he never, that's one the sad thing about it, is he never dances with her because he just is physically really unable to dance with her, like, at a ball. I, I do wish there would have been a really sweet, sweet scene of them, like, slow dancing together by themselves, like, in their private area, like, in their home or something. <sighs> okay. But that is it for now outside of the quest calendar. But I'm dying, so I will be right back. Okay, thank goodness for reusable battery packs. So I just plugged it in and we will keep going. And so that is it for those notes. So the only thing I have left really to do is the quest calendar. So we do have yesterday and today's to catch up on. So let me get my stuff over here. I'm gonna take a drink of tea because I've been talking a lot. And tonight I made um, a bag of the Adagio chestnut tea and a bag of their pumpkin spice tea because they're both black tea based. And they're both very simple. Like the pumpkin spice has like cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and then pumpkin flavor. And then the chestnut one has black tea and chestnut flavor. So they're both very simple and I love the nuttiness added to the pumpkin spice. It's a really good blend. I like this is my one of my new favorites okay so we arrived at the temple on Tuesday so then yesterday what we should have done was oh of course I'm trying to hurry so what do we have a map of the sun temple <coughs> all right so we're gonna start at the s and have to make our way to the star or I guess s is down here Okay, something tells you this temple may have been meant to stand for holiness with its bright and beautiful architecture, but the contents inside are dangerous for those that enter. So navigate the dungeon like a maze, begin at the S for start, and make your way to the end labeled with a star. Resolve each room you visit before choosing your next. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we will do S. So we will start here and this room is four and then we'll come over here to room two and we'll see that it's a huge room and then we'll come back over and we'll do three, one, and then five. All right, so we start in room four. This, there is a large room like a bird cage. A pure white dove sits in a bird bath in the middle of the room. Befriend the bird. Okay, so this is a charisma roll reminder animal tamer. So we do have animal tamer, which gives us a plus two. Our charisma is a plus one. And we also have um, animal tamer from Why are you? Okay. It started flashing at me. So I was like, what? What are you doing? Um, but it is charging. So we do also get Animal Tamer from our follower. So we get a total of plus five to what we roll. This is rolling it behind things. All right, so this is a 19, so we are at 24. If the result is 16 or more, the, you watch the bird fly away up to the top of the ceiling. It 
excuse me, it pecks at something and then returns to the birdbath with a shiny gift for you. Add a golden key to your inventory. Sweet. Cool. All right, so then we'll peek our head in room number two. You have entered a you have entered a crypt with tombs. You read off the names contained here. You find one tomb that has been disturbed recently. The lid has been pushed open slightly and it is empty. What do you recall of these names? So this is an intellect reminder student. So we just get our intellect, which is a zero. So let's roll well. I keep rolling it behind things. That is another 19. Weird. So two. If the result is 11 or more, the names are the children of Alozadar. The empty one is Malagvurugar. He was the eldest son of Alozadar and his only immortal child. A place was made for him, but he was never buried here. Interesting. Okay, so then we'll go back across over to room number three. This chamber sinks down into a large pool with a fountain. The statue is a depiction of an angel pouring divinity from a chalice into the water. Do you choose to go in? Sure, sure. why not? If yes, and your virtue is zero or more, we're at ten, the water from the fountain heals you before drying up. Heal up to two health. Okay. Okay, we have three damage, so that's perfect. All right, and then room number one. This room contains an altar dedicated to the god Alazadar. It is bathed in light from a hole in the top of the ceiling. The altar contains a small pile of coins. Do you choose to take them? No. All right, so on to room number five, the final room. This room has a locked door you need to open. On a long pedestal in front of the door are three balancing scales. Two of the scales are equally balanced with copper coins, iron cubes, and bronze triangles. The third is unbalanced with a side that is empty. On the table, there is a set of coins, cubes, and triangles. If you place the correct items on the empty plate, the door will open. Make four guesses before you check the solution. So this is what they are showing us. So I'm going to pause and figure this out and write, and write down my four guesses and then be back. Okay, so I figured out based on these... I will read out. So I kind of did some formulas here. So one circle and one square equals two triangles. And then I looked at two squares equals three triangles. So from the second formula or the second scale, I got that one square equals one and a half triangles, which means that over here, one square and one circle so we already know one square is one and a half triangles, which means that one circle is a half a triangle. So over here we have one triangle and a circle, which also works as half a triangle. So we have half a triangle and a full triangle. So that is one and a half triangles, which would equal one square. So I'm going to say one square is my answer and I'm not going to make four guesses because I'm pretty sure that's the answer. So let us check. Yep. One iron cube is the answer. So it's cool that they give you more than one option, but I feel like if you look, if you start at the second scale and then look at the first scale that you can kind of figure out your formulas and go from there. So not too hard at all. It took a lot quicker than I expected. Um, so we have, guess correctly. So I guess we have unlocked the door. And that is it for Wednesday's day. So let us do today's section. Ah, we have found a chest and I'm guessing that the golden key is what opens this. We shall see. You find a large and heavy treasure chest in the room. There is bound to be a good treasure within. You just need to find a way to get inside. 
So if you have the golden key, it unlocks this chest. If we did not have it, option B was pick the lock or option C was smash the lock. But we have the key, so let's see. Okay, you place the golden key in the lock of the chest in turn. A perfect fit. It opens with a click. You will discover what is inside tomorrow. So we will probably get some treasure or something fun tomorrow, if not a trap first, and go from there. But another long update, but I tried to be quick, but there was a lot to talk about. Once again, this week is just the week of long updates, but we are almost there. Tomorrow is Friday. I hope you guys all have a good Friday and I will see you all tomorrow. Hello, happy Friday. Um, I don't have too, too much to update on today. Uh, as far as Gold Rush goes, I am 30 something percent through. I am 33% through. I'm on chapter nine and I'm enjoying this. It definitely does have real enemies to lovers vibes, which I'm not. It's not my favorite trope. It's probably one of my least favorite tropes and one I don't typically gravitate towards, but I re I've read a lot of enemies to lovers lately. So I don't know, but this is, they say some pretty mean and nasty stuff to each other. Um, so this is the second book in the Finch family. And I know I kind of touched base a little bit on what it was about beforehand, but it's been a little bit of a while since I read the first book. So I had to kind of reacquaint myself with everybody. And I forgot how much I loved the Finch family. And so there's Cameron, who was book one. This is Reed's book. And then they have two other siblings. And Jackson is the eldest brother. And he's like super mysterious. And he came back to town from Seattle. And all of the family basically came back to help save the brewery that their parents run. And for Jackson, he came back to town and it was like a huge deal. And it's all very mysterious. There's no, like, everything is talked in veiled, I don't know, in words, I guess. And it's, I have a feeling that he was in love with someone like in high school or when he was younger and she died. Or, because he's like very, very broody and he doesn't like to leave. And he doesn't like to come out and do things. So he's very much still in his fields. And they do talk about how it's been a while. But that it was hard for him to come back to town. But nobody knows. Even the family doesn't talk about it in specific. So it's like this huge whole secret that I'm sure Jenny is waiting to talk about when in Jackson's book. But uh, that broody older brother. It gets me, man. It gets me. But this is Reed's book. <laughs> And so the reason behind their enemies and their contention is so Whitney is a very popular romance writer. She typically writes taboo and dark romance and mafia romance and kink and kind of things like that. And she met Reed in college during a writing course. And she wrote a, a short story. They were all supposed to write short stories and then do peer reviews in the class. And he basically slammed it because she wrote a uh, romance and he was like, it's very trope filled. And that kind of started there. And then she kind of got really piss pissy with him. And because she was like, that's the point. It's a romance novel or it's a romance story. And then when he wrote his book, she was, I mean, she had good points about it, it seems like, that he was trying too hard to write, like, Faulkner and a couple other, like, traditional authors, so to speak. But the way that she goes about it is, like, to get back at him for him, for his critique on her work. And then they just kind of basically destroy each other in this class. 
So that is why. And so she has definitely a chip on her shoulder where she's going to prove to Reed that she is a famous author and she keeps throwing it in her face. Well, what have you taught? Like, what have, have you written a book? And I just, I don't know. I get it, but I also feel like it's a little weird how much she is holding on to her hatred for him or I guess her hurt from him and I get it he was the first time that she was crit critiqued because this was the first time she showed her writing to anybody and his critique was just a lot harsher than she was ready for I guess would be the way to say it so there is a lot of contention there but she doesn't know and like she's throwing it in her in his face that he hasn't written a book or he hasn't published a book and it's like but you don't know if that's still his goal if he would just enjoys writing as the reader we know he has a history degree and he taught middle school history he what before he quit his job to help out at the family brewery to help save it so she doesn't know that that may or may not be a goal of his anymore and that he maybe doesn't really care if he hasn't published a book. I mean, we as a reader know he is still working on a Western book and he's had writer's block and he talks about how he writes 10,000. He gets a really good idea. He writes 10,000 words and then he just kind of gets stuck. But I just, I'm not a fan of enemies to lovers. They're, and they say some pretty nasty things to each other. And a couple of times I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. But you do feel the sexual tension between them. And it's kind of funny <laughs> where they're just like, uh, both of them separately are like, uh... <laughs> I don't know why my body's getting excited when my mind is like, I hate this person. And so I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I do, like, I do kind of, I mean, I'm getting slightly upset with Whitney because Annie is both friends of theirs. And this is how Whitney is coming. Annie is the heroine from the first book. And she has been friends with Reed basically all her life. And then she was one of Whitney's first readers and they became friends. And so this is why Whitney is coming to town is because she's coming to stay with Annie. And Annie says multiple times, asks them multiple times, can you please not take it to this extent. I am friends with both of you and I don't want to lose either of these friendships. And Reed kind of pulls it back and he tries to be nice and he tries to be cordial with her. And Whitney just, she, she very quickly stops, I don't know, trying or holding herself back more than I like. I feel like she should be trying to hold herself back a little bit more. And there's a point where he's just like, he says, he's like, the very least you could do is like offer some common courtesy. And I'm just like, yes, Reed, like it doesn't have to be like, you can hate each other and still manage to be around each other and not ruining, like, because you do have, I mean, Reed and Annie are, have been friends forever. Annie is dating Cameron, Reed's brother. And yes, yeah, she has a really close friendship with Whitney, but if you're going to put Annie in this position over and over again, and you're going to basically kind of force her to choose a side, I don't think she's going to choose your side, Whitney. So she is a little... <laughs> a little too prickly at times for me and I get it she gets wrapped up in her anger and her hurt and she's struggling she's still kind of struggling this is like right after her divorce too so I kind of hope that they wait a little bit before they kind of move forward because she needs to process her divorce I mean she still mentions kind of things about it where she's still hurting so I don't know but Enemies to Lovers is hard for, like, it has to be done so, so well for me to really get behind it. And, I mean, honestly, my bar is Juliet Cross, Elsie Silver. Although Elsie Silver's Enemies to Lovers aren't super enemies at times. It's more just, like, antagonistic <laughs> to lovers. But... And then uh, Claire Kingsley, 
oh my gosh I can't remember which one it is it is the fiery redhead and one of the twins I want to say it's book five but that Bailey's Brothers book I thought that was a really well done enemies to lovers and I liked that even though they were enemies, if they were kind of alone together, they would really go at each other. But when they were around their friends or their family, because they all were kind of stuck together, they, while they would go at it, they would also know when to stop or when to pull back at times. So, or they would hold off before they really got into it and they would at least try to not be down each other's throats. So, I don't know. We will see. Enemies to Lovers is hard for me. It's hard for me. Um, but that's just because I'm a sensitive being and I don't know, like I could forgive, but it'd be hard for me to forget some of the things that if someone said something that mean to me, like I could forgive them and I could move on, but it'd be hard to forget it and change that into love. And that's just me as a person. So um, but otherwise, I don't really have anything else. Oh, I don't think I mentioned it yesterday because a lot was going on yesterday. But yesterday was the first day of training camp for the Avalanche. <sighs> yes, it's been less than three months since they won the cup. If I already mentioned this yesterday, I'm sorry, but I am excited. Excited. This weekend is the first preseason. Well, technically, it's the first two preseason games. They're doing a split squad, so one team, half of the squad, will be in Montana, and the other half will be in Vegas. And so one will be at like two o'clock in the afternoon, and the other one will be later in the day. But I'm hockey's back, guys. Hockey is almost back, and I cannot freaking wait. So that was good. More good things that happened yesterday that I can't remember if I talked about, but. Let us do the quest calendar and wrap up this week. So yesterday we did find this treasure chest and we did receive the golden key. So we were able to get it open without having to do anything crazy. Ah, and we do get to choose some fun treasure. So it looks like we have the divine helmet, the necklace of balance, and the gloves of light. Hey, look at that. I read them backwards. <laughs> um, so Divine Helmet gives us plus two to defense. The balance of our necklace of balance gives us one defense and one health. And the gloves of light give us one defense and one damage. So we will get to choose one of these items. So first off, let me check my character sheet and see if there's any of these spots we have not filled yet. So, okay, I do not have a helmet. We do, we are wearing a black, a, a blackless. We are wearing a necklace and we are wearing gloves. So, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Just plus a straight plus two to defense and, we, and we're wearing a helmet. So I'm just gonna take that. So we will take the divine helmet and I will get that written on here. Now, typically what they ask you to do is if you do not have the extra character sheet that I have um, in the, the, I think they call it the hero booklet. Oh, the hero book companion. Okay, that's a weird way to say it. Um, and then I can just write it on my character sheet, but usually they would have you cut it out and like kind of post it so you can see what you're wearing, but because I'm not going to cut this out. So they usually say wait to cut it out until after the previous day because whatever we need for tomorrow will be on the back of it and so it will have it on the back of these. So we want to wait until after we complete tomorrow's pages, but, or I guess this weekend's, but. Anyway, I'm going to take the helmet so I will get all that information on my character sheet and I will get my defense updated. So that's exciting. 
And that is all I have for you this week. So I hope you enjoyed kind of coming along week 38 with me a lot. <laughs> this will be a little bit longer, but there was a lot to talk about and there was a lot going on, but we shall see what happens next week. I have a lot of books I need to get through. I need to finish Gold Rush and then start and finish by Monday night the Smart Women Read Romance Patreon. And then next weekend will be the SJM book, oh, which is the final book, or not the final, the final, original final book in Akatar. So it's the third one, the... Wings and Ruin, of which parts one and two are available in graphic audio, and then the part three isn't available until like November. So I'm debating if I just want to read it all physically, or if I want to do parts one and two with the graphic audio and then finish the rest, or if I want to wait till the third one's out and then reread it with the graphic audio. So I haven't quite decided yet, but it, it also kind of depends if I'm running out of time, I might just do the graphic audio just so I can kind of get through it. But the graphic audios are so good, but I'm not at that point yet. So <laughs> I will let you know during next week's vlog when I pick it up, what I decide to do. So I will stop rambling at you. Thanks. So thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in any of the things I talked about this week, please let me know down below. I am more than happy to talk or gush about any of these fun things. And I will see you all very, very soon.